بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Surely all praises and thanks belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creator, the sustainer and the controller of all that happens in the universe and we invoke his peace and blessings upon his noble messenger, his family, his companions, and all those who follow them in righteousness until the end of time. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Once again, as I'm sure you're all aware, the month of Ramadan is knocking our, on our doors, as we say. And I know for some people, they look forward to Ramadan with some amount of trepidation, especially these days where the days are long. Right? The sun sets at about 8.55 or so, and it right, uh, at dawn is about uh, 4.15 or so. So the day is long, and on top of that, we are experiencing some above normal temperatures, so the days are also hot. So, you know, the combination of long days with, with, with above normal temperature, of course, is what uh, scares a lot of people. And so, some people are worried about being hungry, being thirsty, especially thirst. And then there are those who look forward to Ramadan with, with gladness and happiness, in spite of the physical difficulties that we will all have to go through, there is gladness in the heart. Why? Because it gives us the opportunity to truly demonstrate our submission and surrender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that of course, as we all know, is the essence of Islam. It is for the individual to submit and surrender to God Almighty and to be willing to make sacrifices and to go through hardships, not for personal gains or self selfish motives, but simply to please and to obey God the Creator. And so once again, brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has presented all of us with this wonderful opportunity in the month of, of Ramadan for us to renew ourselves, for, for us to come back down to earth, so to speak, for us to once again be able to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once again, for us, the opportunity for us to undo a few bad habits and learn some new ones, some good new ones. And if we do this every year, you can see that over a period of years, that life for the individual will improve, will get better. So we should welcome Ramadan with open hearts and open minds and open arms, and not be afraid or worried about the physical difficulties associated with it. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it clear, and this is what ought to give us that inner satisfaction and comfort. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it clear in the Quran, in Surah Al-Baqarah, when He talked about fasting, He made it clear that the objective is not to impose unnecessary hardships upon people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse 185, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرَ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرَ Allah wants ease for you and He does not want difficulties for you. This statement comes right after the statement in which Allah says شَهْرُ رَمَضَانَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنُ هُدًا لِلنَّاسِ وَبَيِّنَاتٍ مِنَ هُدًا وَالْفُرْقَانِ فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهْرَ فَلْيَصُمْهُ 
ومن كان مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخرى يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر. Allah says the month of Ramadan is the month in which He revealed the Quran as guidance from mankind and as proof and evidence that it is indeed guidance. So whoever among you witnesses this month, meaning you're not traveling and you're not ill, then let him fast. But whoever is ill or traveling, وَمَنْ كَانَ مَرِيدٌ أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٌ And whoever is ill or traveling, فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامِ أُخْرَى Then they make up the same number of days missed on other days. Then Allah says, Allah wants ease for you, not hardships. So the objective of the institution of fasting upon Muslims in Ramadan is not to put us through hardships and difficulties unnecessarily. Allah the Exalted does not give orders just to amuse Himself. So whatever He has ordered or prohibited is not to amuse Himself. It is not to see what human beings would do, how they would react. Allah the Exalted is far removed from this. You and I do that, right? We do things and sometimes we issue orders just for the fun of it. But God doesn't do that. He is far removed from that. He is exalted and glorified from behaving or doing such things. So Allah makes it clear that the order to fast, in as much as there are some difficulties associated with fasting, especially for us, with the long days and the, and the high temperatures. In spite of this, the objective is not to impose on the human being unnecessary hardships. So the goal of fasting, in as much as it is difficult physically, is not the physical difficulty of the fasting. That's not the objective. The objective is greater than that. But nevertheless, some difficult, uh, physical difficulties will be experienced. Uh, in some countries more than others, and in some seasons more than others. But nevertheless, Ramadan will always be that opportunity, brothers and sisters, for each one of us to renew our commitment, for each one of us to take a step back from the busy lives and the preoccupations we've had over the uh, uh, year or so, to take a step back from all of this and to once again connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a wonderful opportunity for each one of us to make certain resolutions. When the new year comes in, we we'll always hear about resolutions, New Year's resolutions. People have long lists of things they hope to do or achieve over the next year. Ramadan is actually the best time for each one of us to come up with a short list, not a long list, a short list of such resolutions. Maybe two or three things we would like to change in our lives. Because while fasting, given the objective of fasting is a higher awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is what makes it much easier for the individual to undo anything he or she wants to undo in terms of habits and to learn something new. Roughly, a person needs about three weeks, 21 days, to unlearn a bad habit and to learn a new one. So we have one month to unlearn anything bad we would like to unlearn and undo, and in its place, replace it with something good, something beautiful. So Ramadan presents us with a wonder, the, the, the wonderful opportunity to do tazgiyah to nafs, purification of ourselves. And purification involves two things. One, to remove whatever is not beautiful, whatever is ugly, so to speak. And two, to replace it with something beautiful. Because when you beautify your home, the first thing you do is what? You get rid of anything that you think is not nice. Now obviously you could paint over it. The thing is, whatever is ugly is still just hidden behind, right? So true beautification is to remove everything that's ugly but even after you do that, the room 
may not look ugly, but it's still not beautiful now. It needs to be beautified now. And this is why Tazkiyah involves Takhliyah and Tahliyah. Takhliyah is removal of whatever is bad or ugly, so to speak. And Takhliyah is the beautification of it now, replacing what is taken out with those things that are beautiful. So let us look forward to this Ramadan and embrace it with open hearts and open minds. Not be worried about the physical challenges and difficulties, but be focused more on the tremendous opportunity that Allah has given to all of us. Yes, it's difficult in that the days are long and the temperatures are hot. However, it is a wonderful opportunity for us to make some changes, to make some positive difference in our outcomes in the hereafter. I'm sure many of you or all of you might know people who fasted with us last year. And this year they have passed away. They're no longer going to fast this Ramadan. I know one brother, MashaAllah, very good brother, may Allah have mercy on him. Only a few weeks ago he passed away. And now his family, MashaAllah, are making arrangements to do iftar on the first Saturday in Ramadan, which is in a few days. So it is a lesson for all of us. In spite of the difficulties, it's a wonderful opportunity. And there is no other opportunity, perhaps outside of Hajj, maybe, that it is as wonderful as Ramadan for us to achieve the forgiveness and the mercy and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And inshallah, as we go through the month, we will talk more and we will hear more about various aspects of Ramadan and fasting and virtues and so on. But may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us and help us to prepare mentally. Because that's what's important. It's the mental preparation. If we have that, then the physical difficulties will become bearable. They will become bearable, easy to bear. It is the mind that controls that. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appeals to the mind of human beings. If the mind is on board, everything else will follow. But if the mind is not on board, if a person is not mentally prepared, you will have problems. You will have a lot of problems. And this is why also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Al-Baqarah that the objective He instituted fasting for is so that we may develop taqwa. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ And inshallah, in, in our subsequent, uh, subsequent sessions, we'll talk about the details of taqwa and what it is. And you will see, inshallah, that it is a presence of mind. It is the mental attitude that a person has. That's what taqwa is. The consciousness, the presence of mind that a person has. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us. And may He help us to prepare mentally and emotionally for this wonderful month of Ramadan, this month of great blessings. And you will hear much more about this insha'Allah. The month of forgiveness, the month of mercy, the month of freedom from the hellfire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our fasting this year easy for all of us and for all Muslims. And may He accept from us our siyam and our qiyam and our dua. And may He forgive for us our mistakes and our shortcomings. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah wa lakum wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.